I don't see. Oh, there it is. Okay. Good. The appointed hour of 6, 6 p.m. having been reached, I welcome everyone to this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Steve Judge, Chair of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeal. I hereby call this meeting to order. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 21 and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting recordings may be viewed on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. In accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and ma mailed to parties at interest. In accordance with the provisions, uh, excuse me, we'll begin with a roll call of the regular members of the ZBA. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Meadows? Present. Mr. Henry? Present. Mr. White? Present. And Mr. Sloviter? Present. Also in attendance tonight are Jen Mullins, a permit administrator. She's uh, helping us out with managing our, our meeting tonight. Christine Brestrup, the planning director, and Rob Mora, the building commissioner. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or for additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are rec recognized, Present your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board would normally hold public hearings where information about a project and input from the public is gathered, followed by a public meeting for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of hearing to file the decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20-day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Today, the board will focus on the following items. Number one, the minutes, uh, consideration of the minutes from the meetings of June 6, 2024, a public hearing on ZBA FY 2024-18, Mathena Morrissey, request for a special permit under section 3.3211 of the zoning bylaw to convert a single family dwelling into a non owner occupied duplex with a requested waiver from the sign plan at 180 North, May, uh, North Whitney Street, map 11 D partial 261 RG general residence zoning district. This is continued from May 23rd, 2024. And there's a pending a request to continue to June 11th, 2024. ZBA FY 2024 20. Ron Laverdier, request for a special permit under sections 3.325 and 3.321 of the zoning bylaw to construct a 5,712 square foot mixed use building with nine residential units and two first floor commercial spaces and to construct a raised walkway in the FPC zoning district with a requested waiver from the traffic impact study at 395 West Street, map 19D, parcel one, 
RVC, Village Center Rate Residence, and FPC, Flown Pro Prone Conservancy Zoning District, continued from our May 23rd, 2024 meeting. Following that, there's a general public comment period on uh, matters not before the board tonight and other business before the board uh, within the last 48 hours. So the first order of business tonight is consideration of the minutes uh, from the meeting of June 6th, 2024. Uh, has everybody on the board had a chance to look at those minutes and are there any suggested changes, modifications or amendments to those minutes? Once again, uh, these minutes are um, very robust, very complete. I think they're accurate um, and I think they reflect uh, very well the, uh, the meeting that we had on uh, June 6th. If there's no uh, amendments or suggested changes, I would entertain a motion that we approve the minutes from the June 6th, 2024 meeting. Do I have such a motion? So moved. And second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. The chair votes aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. And Mr. Slobiter? Aye. The vote is five to nothing. The min uh, minutes from the June 6th meeting are approved. The next order of business is um, Public, public hearings on ZBA FY 2024-18, Mathena Morrissey. Uh, we have, and I think you've all received a copy of a letter from um, her attorney asking for this to be continued to July 11th, 2024. Um, typically, that's, we grant that request uh, because the, her team can't be here for the meeting this week. Um, if there's no, I would entertain a motion that we approve the continuation to July 11th, 2024. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion to continue the public hearing on ZBA FY 2024-18 to July 11th, 2024 at six o'clock. Are the chair votes aye? Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. And Mr. Slobiter? Aye. The motion has, passes five to nothing. The motion carries. The next order of business is FY, uh, ZBA FY 2024-20, Ron Labertier, a request for a special permit under sections 3.325 and 3.231 of the zoning bylaw to construct a 5,700 square 12 square foot mixed use building with nine residential units and two first floor commercial spaces and to construct a raised walkway in the FPC flood prone conservation conservation district with this requested waiver from the traffic impact study at 395 West Street map 19 D parcel one RC village center residence and FPC flood prone conservancy zoning districts. This is continued from May 23rd, 2024. Um, the first I, question is, do any members have any disclosures they wish to make on this matter? All right. If not, the next order is to review the site visit, uh, which we did not do uh, at, the, at the first meeting. Uh, we had a site visit. Um, I think three of our members were there. Uh, we walked the property. Uh, we met with the, with the applicant. We walked the property. Uh, we viewed the, the existing built, the existing home that's proposed to be torn down. We observed the um, elevation of the proposed building and how it slopes into the, 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 uh, the ground moving away from the existing parking area. We observed how the um, new buildings would be shielded from the existing buildings. We walked along the, dry, the current um, driveway into that area, that part of the ground, which is proposed uh, to be a, um, a bridge, a walking bridge eventually through the conservation and the, the wetlands. We walked to the back of the property to observe the, um, it's abutting on the uh, Hickory Ridge project and the, um, and the conservation land there. We um, saw, we, Mr. Libertier showed us um, his 
a, a representation of how he feels the film will be will be uh, um, laid out, will be put on the on the land, and the amount of film needed um, for that. And since that time, there's been a, a, a confirmation of uh, the fill requirements for the property. Um, we've also we also were um, asked to to view the the uh, two of the units in the in the residential units in the property. The basis for that is that they're going to be similar to the residential units that are proposed to be built. We observed those, met with the current tenant, uh, and observed the build uh, inside of the buildings. And then we walked outside, and looked at the parking lot uh, that's between this building, the new the existing building, the new building that's going to be built, and and the uh, other existing buildings. Um, and we looked at parking spaces that would be uh, proposed to be built. Um, I think that is pretty much sums up the the site visit. Um, Mr. Slobiter or Mr. Henry, is there, you were on the visit with me. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I think you covered it, Mr. Judge. Mr. Slobiter? The, the only thing that I would add is that we had um, we were able to see where the access would be to the new property that it, that it would join the existing parking area and access from the buildings that are already there and that access to the new the new building would go through the uh, the same access to the complex from the street and then over to the new building. So we saw where the traffic flow will be. That's yeah. the only thing. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Good addition. Thank you. Uh, next is to review submissions. Uh, we have received from the applicant um, an application form, additional form from applicants, a management plan, a complaint response form, a standard lease and floor plans. Uh, floor plans are prepared by Carol Vince, Vince uh, Architectural Services, dated 2-23-2024. We have floor plans, exterior elevations, and ex uh, two sets of exterior elevations. We also received a revised mixed-use plan set, uh, revised dated 6-21-2024, prepared by SWCA Env Environmental Consultants, sheets 1 through 15, which include a cover sheet, existing and proposed conditions, grading and drainage, erosion control plan, landscape plan, foundation planning plans, detail and notes, lighting plan, signage plan, stormwater pre-development plan, stormwater post-development plan, stormwater and construction details, lighting and signing details, typical pedestrian walkway crossing details, and a fire truck turning movement. Um, I've, we've, I have, we did receive one staff submission from the town engineer an email dated 5 20 24 stating that he has no concerns with the application um, one last point the applicants requesting two waivers a traffic impact study and a parking waiver so um, at this point in time i would ask uh, who is representing the applicant mr libertier uh, please uh, um, identify yourself for the record your name and address and the people that are going to present for you. And what we'd like to do is, you know, if this could, if you could give us your presentation, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, something in that range. I know this is an important project for you and it's a big project, but I think, I think in that time frame we might I can probably cover all the most important aspects of it and then we can uh, go to board questions. Hi. I'm Ron Lavertier. I live at 433 West Street, Amherst, Massachusetts, which is adjacent to the project. Um, a little bit about Amherst Office Park. I just thought it might be a little history here. It's uh, My dad had purchased the 441 brick building out front in, in the mid-70s. And he renovated that building, and um, we had some offices in there. As a matter of fact, um, um, uh, one a uh, medical, I uh, know a uh, medical insurance company started their actual business there. 
And then he convinced the government to come down that this would be an appropriate site for the United States Department of Agriculture. Um, and that was the very first office building that we constructed here on site. I was part of that construction team um, when I was 24, but I wasn't given uh, very much responsibility other than the, the wrong end of a shovel. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you know, and as the years have progressed, uh, the office park here has actually gone from mostly office space to now about 50% office and 50% um, residential. Um, as those need, as the needs of Amherst have changed, we've been slowly adapting uh, our our buildings to fit um, a more residential feel. Um, this is a uh, this building would add nine more residences to the area, and most of the the rentals that do exist here in Amherst are down in Amherst Office Park. Are are young professionals? Um, I understand a lot of the the students live closer to UMass, but um, we actually do not have any students uh, that go to UMass. Most of the folks here are young professionals, or you know they're they're connected to UMass as professors. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of turnover here. Um, and I kind of try to build projects that um, that I would live in. Um, that's the way I kind of look at it. Uh, if I would live in the unit, then I feel as though that's something I'm proud to rent, proud to build and rent. So most of the units tend to be a little bit larger than what's going on uh, in the rest of town, but we're also uh, seeking a slightly different market. Um, the market is, is you know, as a matter of fact, we just moved in some retirees today. So we have a full mix of people from young professionals to retirees, and um, uh, that's what we want to continue doing down here. Um, and this was a perfect uh, spot. It turned out the HAP, this was an old HAP house that uh, that the state had rented and that lease came to, to an end and the state didn't renew. So we bought the old, the old farmhouse there. It was actually the Matusco house. And, uh, you know, at first we just sort of cleaned it up and we've rented it um, while we were waiting for uh, the market to uh to fit um you know we went through covid and then we went through this high high inflationary period so really needed to wait until the um you know a lot of the building materials sort of settled back to what i call a more reasonable price and for instance that would be um you know two by six by tens had had gone all the way up into the 20 something dollars a piece and now they're back down around nine dollars a piece and i feel as though you know by watching my numbers i can supply a quality product to you know the folks that rent from me at a reasonable price and that's one of my goals um it's not just to maximize the dollar but also to provide a service to the folks that live here and provide high quality housing um so when we sat down with SWCA, uh, Tony Summers, and uh, we started working on a plan that went, you know, sort of back and forth until we finally found a building that fit nicely on the land, sort of settled into the slopes of the land. And we had discussions with um, the Conservation Commission about removing the driveway completely out and reconnecting the wetlands on the lower section um which was you know, which was received quite well by the conservation commission but also felt though a pedestrian uh connection to the town sidewalks was was appropriate and uh, as you can see on the east side of the project and then you know we started with designing the building and then coming up with um first we just came up with nine apartments um and we were moving in that direction for a while but what i was noticing during covid was so many 
so many people were looking to to have an office at home and the one complaint i heard over and over is they they don't want to bring somebody through their house to go to their office all the time so i started coming up with the concept that if we had a two bedroom unit that could either be used as a two bedrooms or could be used as a one bedroom in an office with two separate doors i was going to i was going to satisfy people that wanted to have that home office and work from home and not have to travel all the time for work and i could also um, um it could also be used as a two bedroom or if you had a teenager that wanted a little bit more access in and out of their own bedroom uh, would suffice as that kind of thing um so it kind of fit with <coughs> the world's going and so um I, we came up with this design and we worked uh diligently with soils engineers and we worked with the fire department on the turnaround and we ended up fall, you know, falling one parking spot short but i didn't think that was uh as I didn't think that was a big issue because when we built the 417 building, the planning board at that time had requested that I do counts on the building to determine in a mixed use if, if there was more parking than was needed. And in the 417 building, we, we always had a, anywhere from 15 to 20 open spots available in a mixed use building. Um, so the feeling was that that being adjoined to this, uh, the two sites together, that having 23 of the 24 spots would uh, would certainly suffice for the needs of this building. Um, and the second thing I'm asking is the, the traffic impact study. Um, one of the things that started about five years ago on Friday afternoons on traffic flowing north to south on 116 when we had a traffic light there, occasionally the traffic would back up across two of the three entrances that we have at Amherst Office Park. So it, that's, it, you know, traffic was a little, it was starting to get noticeable if you were trying to get out and, you know, traffic was just stopped in front of you. And the uh, town invested uh, quite a bit of money in the in the rotary, and the rotary has been a, an unbelievable success. I I will say this: I was actually a little skeptical of rotaries, but when they did the Atkins rotary, I was actually shocked how well it worked, and and uh, this one works equally as well. So we have never had uh, stop traffic in front of us. It's also when they when the rotary was put in, um, our crosswalks were put in with 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 stop uh, stop buttons and signs. So that is uh, that has really improved the the natural um, biped flow around the around the South Amherst Center here, and it's it's I think really done a nice job. Um, so that's a little bit of an overview, but the, the, the concept really of people having the ability to use their second bedroom as an office, I think uh, is is definitely something that's moving, uh, is moving the needle nationwide. And I'd like to, you know, I mean, beyond this, this one little project, I'd like to see more of that in Amherst, because if your office is at home, you don't have to get in the car to go to it or a bus. You can just walk over, um, and that's where the second door um, to each of these units, each six of these units uh, was, was conceived, and I just wanted to make sure you understood what I was thinking, um, but I think it's a, you know, it, and it's going to be a bit of a test model to see, because a lot of the, you know, people say, oh, yeah, 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 I'd love to have an office at home, but I don't want to bring people through my house. I, you know, I'm kind of guessing that, you know, they said it, but is it really true? I mean, you know, once the building's built, I'll find out how many people actually do use that second bedroom as an office. Um, I'm going to certainly advertise it that way. But, uh, you know, and down here, we don't get a lot of the roommate roommate um, 
in in our rental so far we have 29 residential units here and they're um, a lot of the young professionals will actually uh, or young couples will actually rent um a two bedroom unit and uh they they just rent it at, and keep it as keep that second bedroom as a guest bedroom or as their you know a little private office so i mean so far or families for instance we do have a cambodian family here that is uh, uses a two bedroom and they you know they're quite happy although they would like a little more space but I guess that's the, I, you know, I'd like to hear some questions if anyone's got any. You know, I, I think it'd be helpful if um, we'd have either Mr. Summers or Mr. Marcus just review the, the one issue that wasn't clear at the time of the site visit was the fill, because there was originally a thought that it exceeded um, the amount you could get with a special permit, you would have needed a waiver, I think, um, or a variance. You need, you need some special permission to to use the fill, which was more than would have been permitted under, under normal circumstances. I understand that that's been, uh, you looked at that, that you've come in under the rules, and, but tell us what happened. And before you do that, give us your, give us your name and address for the record. Tony, do you want to address the fill and the sheet that goes with that? Tony Summers, uh, 15 Research Drive in Amherst is the SWC office. And so here we were looking at, um, based on the existing and proposed grades, um, where we were um, had an average of greater than two foot, two feet of fill and greater than five feet of fill. Uh, the greater than two foot to 4.99 is represented in the yellow hatch. The um, more than five feet is um, indicated by the orange. Uh, the orange, the reason there's um, tends to be more fill there is uh, primarily because right along this side, uh, there is a retaining wall. And so that is uh, the backfill for that area. And then there is a detention basin in, the, in that area as well. Um, other um, other um, primary fill areas tend to be right along um, where there's berming for the detention basins. Um, because of the grades, there needs to be a step down. And because we couldn't cut down lower in uh, into existing grade, we built up on the backside. And so that's also where a lot of that um, fill is coming from for those for those basins. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if, I, if I may, I'm just going to quickly summarize some of the um, other points with this application. Just give us your name and address, Mr. Marcus. Uh, Mickey Marcus, I live at um, 8 Lady Slipper Circle in Amherst. Uh, I've been uh, the environmental consultant uh, with Mr. Laverdia on this project and uh, previous projects and very familiar with, with the site. Uh, Tony, would you mind just looking at the existing conditions for just a moment? So there, there's, uh, as, as already mentioned, this is, uh, there's a uh, small uh, four bedroom house that's on the property unoccupied, built uh, in mid 1950s. So uh, as part of this project, uh, that will be demolished. Um, Tony, if you can go to the, back, I'm sorry, back to the site plan. So there, there are two um, special permit issues. One is um, for the home office on two of the apartments, and the second is the FPC work. And I'd like to just, uh, you know, I think uh, Mr. Laverdia address the apartments. And just so you're clear, there's nine total apartments that are proposed. There are two one-bedroom apartments. There are four two-bedroom apartments. There are two two-bedroom apartments that have a home office. And then there's one four-bedroom apartment, nine total. Uh, the the office, uh, the, the, the two uh, two bedrooms that have the office will be on the first floor. Um, the, so that, that was one of the reasons for the special permit. The second, uh, Tony, can you zoom in on that crossing area? We, we, we um, met quite a bit uh, 
pre-permitting with uh, Aaron and the Conservation Commission members just to review the project and come up with plans. And this, if you, in your site visit, you saw that this area that's in light blue is an existing driveway that is uh, to be abandoned. So the driveway gets pulled up, the wetlands on either side uh, get reconnected. There's a culvert that gets re uh, removed. Um, so this is in uh, the flood prone conservancy district. It's actually not in the 100 year floodplain. The 100 year floodplain is the area uh, just um, to the north. Um, so it's, it's one of these areas where the flood prone conservancy and the 100 year floodplain don't align but it is part of the flood prone conservancy. So um, what's proposed here is um, removing uh, the, pave, uh, the, the, the driveway pavement uh, and putting in um, a walking path. And this walking path is on helical pier. So it's, it's above the ground. And it's the idea is to provide uh, pedestrian access from West Street uh, onto the property. And right now, um, what we're, what, I understand is that a lot of people uh, use the existing driveway to access Hickory Hills. And so th they'll have that continued access. So that's the work proposed. There's no fill, it's actually removal of fill. And um, the new work is a boardwalk and it does have a... Oh, you've muted yourself, Mr. Marcus. Sorry, the, the, uh, the boardwalk does have lighting associated with that. That's shown on the site plans. Um, the, um, we talked about the, the traffic impact study that there were two waivers. One was traffic impact study. The second is a parking waiver. Um, uh, Mr. Summers had, had originally designed the site with 24 parking spaces, but after, uh, discussions with, uh, the fire department, uh, modifications were needed for the turnaround for the hook and ladder truck that's shown in yellow that removed one parking space. Uh, what Mr. Laverde is suggesting is that um, there is plenty of additional parking spaces available in adjacent parking areas that always seem to have open spaces. Um, we talked about the fill. Um, just wanted to say uh, there's a stormwater plan. It's a very extensive uh, low impact development stormwater plan using uh, pervious asphalt and a whole series of these rain gardens that's been, was reviewed quite a bit by the Conservation Commission. That all those green areas are just sort of a cascading uh, infiltration for stormwater. Um, that uh, Jason Skeels has also reviewed um, this plan. Um, should say there's a lot of, uh, landscape improvements. There's over a half acre of invasive species removal, replanting with native vegetation. So uh, Mr. S uh, Summers, who's a landscape architect, developed a whole planting plan using native plants. So the idea is to green up the site, improve stormwater uh, as well. Uh, so I think that's all I'll say right now. Take any, any questions. We'll all take questions that the board members have. Thank you for the Time. Before we go to questions, uh, Ms. Brestrup, you have your hand raised. Yes, I just wanted to clarify something um, that um, Mr. Marcus said. In, in the past, we've had a requirement for um, a special permit for home occupations. Um, in this case, we don't have a special permit for home occupations. Instead, what we have is a special permit for a mixed use building in the RVC zoning district. So that may have been a little confusing. I just wanted to clarify that. So this whole building, which normally, if it were in the downtown area would be um, before the planning board for site plan review, because this is in the RVC zoning district, it's required to have a special permit, um, but there is not no longer that requirement for a home occupation to have a special permit. Um, so just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. I did have one question. Um, can you just blow this up a little bit? What we see on the screen, and I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the area where there's the sort of the, the curved driveway at what I would call the front of the building, not the porch, but right where you, yeah, where you're. Is that is where are the two, um, two bedroom with office or. 
where are the offices located? Which, which side of the building are the offices located? The offices are located right, if you look at the building from uh, from this entrance, they're right where the left of where it says water main entrance and right of the water main entrance. So it's that front quarter of the building when you drive in. All right, so those are the non, so that, that's where the non-residential space would be. That's the, um, the potentially the office space that can be a, access directly from the, the uh, outdoors, right? You don't, that's, that's what you're looking at. Yep. Okay, good, thank you. Um, I don't have a lot of other questions. I think in terms of this, um, we, my questions regarding the fill seems to have been answered. And I note that there's no, that it's been um, also reviewed with the order of condition by the um, Conservation Commission. And so I think the uh, flood, the implications for the flood prone conservancy district have been um, addressed by the other body in town that uh, works on this. Um, and I understand your, your request regarding, the request you're making regarding the parking, we can discuss that as well. But are there, do other board members have questions for the applicant? I have a question, Mr. Chair, but it's not for the applicant, it's actually for Mr. Mora. Yep. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Mora, I see that you're here. Are there any concerns um, not addressed by the applicant that the zoning board should consider? Uh, there, there are no concerns. Um, you know, staff has reviewed the project in great detail with the applicant and, and familiar with it and supportive of the project. Um, I, I will point out that there's a, a determination that the board needs to make regarding the, uh, the location of the non-residential space. And I know uh, Mr. Judge is familiar with that and we probably talked about that, bring that up at some point, but that's, that's the only unusual uh, uh, piece of the application that just needs to be talked about a little bit. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? Oh, Ms. Brestra, I see your hand is up. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to have my hand up. Okay. All right. No questions from board members. Um, it's a time for you know, if there's another, anything else that the applicant wants to, to uh, describe or discuss, it would, I would then turn it to public comment. I note that we've had no public comments submitted to the, uh, the board prior to the, the beginning of the, uh, of the meeting tonight. Uh, so if people wish to comment on this, if there's anybody who wish to comment on this, um, I'd ask staff to help me identify them. If you do wish to comment and you are called upon, please give us your name and address for the record. Keep your comments to about three minutes and make sure your comments are addressed to the board. So um, do we have anybody who wishes to speak to this issue uh, in the public? You know, I, I don't see anybody. Janet, do you? I have three attendees, but yeah. they are they have not raised their hand. Right. Okay. If there's no public comment, uh, it's a last chance for board members to ask questions or for the the applicant to make any further presentations to the board. If not, um, I would entertain a motion that we uh, move to public hearing on this a public meeting on this application while keeping the public hearing open so that we can uh, deliberate on the matter. So a motion to move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open in case we wish to gather additional information. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Yeah. So Seven. moved and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion to move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open. The chair votes aye. 
Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. The motion is approved five to nothing. I will now go into a public meeting on this application. Public meeting is generally where the board deliberates. Um, they discuss their general feelings about the matter. They then will then review the conditions, the findings, and make a recommend and, uh, and perhaps dispose of this one way or the other tonight. Uh, and generally is not a time for public comments. So um, I guess I'd begin by saying that um, we spent a lot of time on our site visit. I understand uh, the, uh, the project here pretty well, and I think the other two members felt comfortable with the amount of information we had, whether it's dispositive to your feeling towards the project or not is another thing. But we got a lot of, we got real good uh, look at the property and the idea that the applicant has. It seems to make sense. It's in an area where, from my standpoint, I think it adds to the neighborhood. It's consistent in every respect, even to the extent of the same type of architectural detail. It's going to be consistent throughout the property. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting concept that I think Mr. Lavertier has, has, uh, has uh, proposed here of uh, making home offices a little bit more um, accessible or more easily uh, used by people if they wish to have that. Uh, so I'm inclined to approve this. I think there is one issue which when we get to the, um, the findings, we'll have to discuss, and that issue is, um, and I'll, I'll try to, it's, it's arcane, but I'll try to describe it, and then I'll ask Mr. Moore or Ms. Restrup to correct me <laughs> when I describe it incorrectly. But typically, you would, in this building, it would require that 30%, um, no more than 30% of the, of the, uh, um, first floor or ground floor property faces the, that is non-residential faces, this is confusing. There's a, the goal is to have the non-residential property face the street. And it is that 30%, at least 30% of the square footage has to be non-residential facing the street. In this case, the, street facing part of this building is 251 feet from West Street. It doesn't, and the intent of course was to create, the bylaw was to create a sense of mixed use uh, for the, the, uh, the building, that there's, you can see the mixed use from the streetscape. You're not gonna see a lot of the streetscape from the street facing uh, frontage of this building and you're more likely to, when you approach this building from, especially when you're driving, you're gonna approach it from the turnaround in the front where the office buildings are. And so I think the intent of the bylaw was to provide the um, sense of a, a commercial space or non-residential space being in the front and that easily accessible that people can see that. Um, and that in this case, I think that's, that is accomplished even though the bylaw, um, Require, the bylaw requires that it face uh, that percentage from the street, which is 251 feet away. The special permit granting authority has the ability to, to modify that. And that is one of the things that we've asked for here in this special permit application, is that we have to make a finding later on that um, this, that, that we, are, we are allow this variance, not the, not the technical term, but a waiver from that pr provision to be uh, included in the, the special permit. So that's the uh, item that Mr. Mora mentioned as might be concerning, uh, something we should discuss. I'm not bothered by it. I think it makes sense and I think it fulfills the intent of the bylaw. Uh, and that I think exactly why we're here for, to use our discussion in these matters. But uh, Mr. Mora, did I, did I bungle it too much or did I kind of get the right idea out there? Yeah, yeah, you, you got the right idea. I just want to clarify a couple of things. So it's uh, it's the thirty percent of the non-residential portion of the building occupying the first floor. So that's the one uh, piece of criteria that isn't satisfied uh, exactly by this proposal because some of the office uh, space or non-residential space is on the floor below. 
So it's just acknowledging that uh, it's, it's a split between the two floors and the bylaw allows the board to accept that. Uh, and then the other piece is that uh, the non-residential space uh, is, is not necessarily predominantly facing the street um, given the orientation of the building. So again, this isn't waiver request or uh, any special approval needed. It's just the board acknowledging that they found that the criteria has been satisfied given the, the specifics of this proposal. Got it. The other item that is here is, is the parking, uh, the parking weight, not uh, exception. Um, generally we require 24, there's 23 provided here. In, from a site visit, it's clear to me that there's more than enough parking in this area to accommodate the additional um, residential and, and non and commercial and non-residential um, tenants uh, and the existence of the old traffic or parking study seems to prove that out. So I think that we're, I, I, have no, I have no trouble with the ability of the, uh, to, of this plan to meet the parking needs of the area and of the development. Um, I guess there's other, other members, that's my inclination. Um, other members have a feeling or a question about this, Mr. Sloviter? Well, um, wait, let me make sure I'm not muted. Okay. Uh, yes, I have a, a few comments to address some of the things that have come up. Uh, first of all, I, I was at the site visit and I felt that the design of the proposed building is so consistent in, in appearance and feel to the buildings that are already there that this almost seems like an expansion of an existing project. It doesn't feel like a new or novel uh, application. I know it is, but it, it fits in well. Uh, I don't consider the parking to be an issue of one space. That seems uh, the chair commented on that, and I want to reinforce that. There's adequate parking. The requirement that the non-residential uh, space face the street, it seems to me that, that the intention of that is that the commercial part is, uh, is more aligned with the traffic and developing part of the, of the site, which actually in this case is facing the parking and it's facing the access by which anyone will reach the new building. So I think that that is consistent with intent. The, we went into a unit and I was, I didn't care that much one way or the other about the unit that we visited because I didn't think that Mr. Laverdier was going to take us into one that was a dump with unhappy tenants who were complaining. But what did impress me was the general condition of the interior of the building, the corridors, the staircases, also the grounds and the parking. The existing buildings that are under his ownership and management seem well-maintained and cared for. Nothing is shabby. Nothing was calling out to be repaired. There wasn't chip paint in the corridors. All the little things that would call attention to something that's neglected. It seems that the record of this developer paints him as a responsible one. And I find that this proposal, that what they wanna do here is consistent with everything that makes sense, the design, even the return of wetlands. Um, I, uh, Mr. Laverdier referred er earlier to bipeds crossing the street. I hope that quadrupeds are also <laughs> allowed to cross the street and walk on the path. I don't know that I'll be bringing my dogs, but I don't, you know, I think bipeds and quadrupeds coexist well. So I'm, I'm, I feel quite positive about this application and think that he has answered all of the questions responsibly, and I intend to support it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sloviter. Any other comments um, or concerns? 
I think I share Mr. Slover's position. Um, having been on the site visit, my initial impression was that this is just an addition to what's already there. Um, everything that was presented seems to complement what is there. It's just, um, like Mrs. Slover said, this seems like just an expansion. And again, appreciating Mr. Moore's um, perspective, I, I have no reservations and I will support this. Any further comments? If not, what I'd like to do Mr. is White go has through. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Henry. Mr. White has his hand up. Mr. Oh, Mr. White, I didn't see you. Go ahead. You're fine. Uh, no, so I would just state uh, my concerns going into this were pretty common to what you know they would be in a situation like this. You know, issues about you know proximity to wetland, um, infill. You know, are kind of usual cast of characters. But uh, after having reviewed everything here. Um, and of course, you know, relying on everyone on the uh, board who was able to be at the site visit, I would agree uh, with kind of everyone here. Um, I feel like due diligence has been done and I feel comfortable uh, supporting this. Thank you, Mr. White. If there's no uh, further comments, what I'd like to do is go through conditions. Um, I like to do those first because they have, those conditions sometimes are directly affect our ability to make the findings we're required to make. Um, sometimes they're indeed <clears throat> responsible for us being able to make findings. So I'd like to go through the proposed conditions in the project application report. And uh, I find what the staff has provided in this case and was one addition that I suggested uh, earlier today that's reflected in the most recent draft, uh, I approve of the conditions. The first is project use, mixed use residential Condition one just says it has to be built, to, in effect, just says it has to be built to plan. Condition two, the building shall not exceed maximum of three stories, Condition th which it doesn't. Condition three, it, again, the plan is that it's a mixed use building shall not be changed throughout the residential use, including a private dormitory. Condition four, property shall not be used for temporary short-term housing, short-term lodging or advertised as such in print or electronically. Apartments should be rented by unit, not by the bed, with the maximum of one lease for each unit at any time. All approvals and conditions granted by the Amherst Conservation Commission shall be in effect and adhered to as part of the special permit. Number seven, the units at the project shall be registered and permitted in accordance to the Amherst residential, pro resident rental property bylaw. Uh, number eight is a new provision that we've been using for a couple of years, uh, where upon uh, the applicant shall provide an up-to-date complaint and violation log with the Amherst Inspection Services and filed prior to the um, annual um, application for the residential rental registration. Number nine deals with the, that it has to be managed substantially in accordance with the management plan. Ten deals with substantial changes and or substantial changes to any approved site plans. They have, these are all pretty standard going to the Zoning Board of Appeal for review prior to the work taking place. Uh, de minimis can be handled by the uh, building commissioner. Landscaping shall be installed in accordance with the landscape plan. Special permit shall expire within two years of the date that it is filed with the town clerk. And all work associated with the project shall be completed within 30 months from the date of the issuance of the building permit. The building exterior site improvements. Um, these are again pretty much uh, conditions and requirements of both the, the construction crew as well as the, as the town commit as a building commissioner. Um, so for inspection, on-site utilities shall be underground. Exterior lighting shall be dark sky compliant, downcast and shielded, and not shine onto adjacent, adjacent properties or streets. Air conditioning units shall be shielded. All utility work within the public right-of-way shall be conducted with regulations of the Town of Amherst. All work with the right-of-way shall be reviewed by the Town Council. The applicant shall be provided to Zoning Board of Appeals at public meeting specifications for any amenities such as bike racks, site furniture, playground pit, and benches for review and approval prior to installation. Number 21, work within the right of way. Um, deliberate disturbance during construction shall be completed by the applicant and all costs um, approval to prior to the issuance of a final certificate. Management plan provides for trash pickup. The management plan provides the project shall also be managed in accordance with the terms of the management plan. Again, 
you got to you got to do what's in your management plan is essentially what we're saying there construction these are a series of conditions that are pretty standard for any larger construction project that we've seen you know, everything from time of building to um, when you have to contact the fire chief washing of tires i don't want to run through all of this all of these construction is so that's conditions uh, 24 through 35. Um, these are ones we see all the time for, for projects in the town. Uh, completion of work, but if anybody has a question about those, raise them at the end of the, the discussion here today. Completion of the work, you provide as-built plans that show building locations, grade, access ways, sidewalks and walkways, curving, stormwater, management lighting facilities of build, building commissioner and town engineer, uh, which are placed in special permit files. Again, we're going to the, the plan you have is the plan you have to build, build it by unless you seek um, uh, change either from the, and approve that change either from the building commissioner or from us if it, if it should rise to us. As part of the as built plans, the applicant shall include and confirm the fill amounts as in the ad, as built plans. Uh, and finally, the fill should not substantially exceed the amount shown on sheet 16.0 average fill height calculations. CAD CAM plans are required for final review. Uh, 40 deals with temporary certificates of occupancy, which shall be approved for the building commissioner. The building commissioner may impose security requirements. Um, 40, 40, the new 42 is prior to starting any site work. The building commissioner and the applicant shall provide the building commissioner with stormwater pollution prevention plan to address specific sedimentation, a list of written procedures that outline operation and maintenance measures for the stormwater drainage facilities. The 43, the final certificate of occupancy shall not be issued for the building until the final top coat is laid, landscaping is shown, has been installed, and a complete as-built plan has been submitted to the building commissioner and town engineer by all professional designs for the site and constructed and approved by the building commissioner and the town engineer. Those are the conditions. Um, were there any concerns about the conditions as in the project application report or were there any additional conditions? members want to propose. Mr. Meadows has his hand raised. Oh, Mr. Meadows, thank you. I'm finding uh, it up in the upper corner here. I'm having a hard I, time seeing. I so don't know I, how I got up there. Yeah, well, you're, you're <laughs> at the top of our list, Mr. Meadows. That's, oh, that's, 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 that's that must be it. it. <laughs> uh, question for Mr. Mora, uh, because I failed to look it up earlier. Uh, does does this not fall in with the number of units in the parking such that there must be EV parking charging stations for this number of units in this amount of parking area, a state requirement? I believe that this will require uh, the, the EV charging under the new uh, specialized code. And I, I didn't see any charging stations in the plan yet. I didn't note any either. It's, um, no, I don't. I don't think they've identified the space, but it would it would take over one of the existing uh, parking spaces that are shown in the layout. There, there wouldn't be an additional space provided or changes to the site plan. Correct. So that would be required. That that's. EV station would be required under state law. That's right. Yes, yeah, so under, under the under the 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 new the new state energy code and the town's adoption of the specialized code, uh, specialized code to the uh, expansion of the stretch code. So we wouldn't need to have a condition specifically requiring that EV station. It would be done as a matter of. Um, your office can making sure that they comply with this town by law, the new law and the state law, right? Yes, uh, during during plan review and permitting uh, building permit phase, you know, that'll have to be identified, uh, you know, the everything from the conduit to the location of where it's going, going to terminate and the service information uh, will all be detailed in the construction documents uh, prior to permitting. Got it. I thought I read somewhere that there were four EV stations planned in there. I thought I read something to that effect. Mr. Marcus does have his hand up. Possibly he's. Is this in re direct response to the issue that has been 
been raised or is, um, is if that's the case, then you can speak, Mr. Marcus. I had another issue, but I think Mr. Laverdia can uh, address the existing EV charging stations that are on the property. Mr. Laverdia, can you address the existing uh, EV parking? Oh, you're muted, Mr. Have to unmute. Oh, you're muted. There you go. Uh, presently, we have um, uh, two uh, charging stations on site, and we're working towards putting another three charging stations on site. My question is, um, since Amherst Office Park is sort of a, a, a an entity in itself of of now this will be one more building so it would be eight buildings um would it be possible to just consider that we're now up to five charging stations each with two heads so we'd be up to 10 heads on site um and r rather than you know and, and consider that as an all-encompassing for the for the eight buildings and I, I guess that's a question for Ron. I don't know how that calculation has been done, Mr. Meadows or Mr. Moore. Do you know? Uh, I, I don't. I don't have all that information in front of me, but we can certainly review that. And if it if it complies with the uh, state energy code, then it would become a possibility, unless the board had another specific condition uh, related to its proximity to the, the new building. Mr. Meadows, I guess the question is for you, of you, is it important that there be a condition requiring that these EV stations be close to the new building or if there's enough in the parking lot to satisfy need in the state law? If, if there's enough in the parking area to satisfy the state laws, then that's, that's good. And then obviously, there's money available through the state and national grid so that to help pay for those things. So, Great. Any other um, Questions, concerns from board members regarding the conditions. And I will then just see if Mr. Marcus has a quick point to make, but if we have no other questions from the board members. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marcus. Marcus. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I, one of the things I uh, neglected uh, to mention uh, was that uh, there was an additional permit that was granted uh, for this building by Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program. And uh, one thing just to be consistent for on condition uh, number six, uh, where you say that uh, the plans need to be adhered to by the Conservation Commission, uh, you may wanna just also just add and natural heritage conditions by Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program. They, 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 they are requiring that there's a turtle protection plan be put in place during construction. And so that's already been reviewed and approved by commission, the conservation commission, but it's a, it is a separate entity that um, creates some additional conditions. Marcus, so does, I am not familiar, or maybe um, Ms. Brestrup, I'm not that familiar with the specifics of the conservation commission order, but does it reference the, uh, the provision that Mr. Marcus is, is discussed and do we need to have a, a second reference to it if it is still referenced? If not, I think we can leave it as it is. I don't think you need a separate reference to it um, because it stands. It stands as you know, if if that was required by the conservation commission, then it will be required, and they will go. enforce it. Yep, we don't need to. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Though. All right. Um, unless there's any questions or other, any amendments to the conditions, I would entertain a motion that we approve the conditions as contained in the uh, project application report uh, revised June 27th, 2024, conditions one through 43. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Is there second. a second? Did I hear a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If there's no discussion, uh, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the conditions contained in the project application report. Uh, the chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. 
The vote was five nothing. The motion to approve the conditions has passed. We now need to go to the findings we have to make um, under for this application. Um, and I'm going to turn to uh, the zoning bylaw review, um, where under section 3.3 3.228 and specifically through 3.231 there are um, in a flood prone conservancy the special the planning board or the special permit granting authority has to make has to find that the um, proposal the application uh, assures protection of drainage elevation of buildings adequacy of sewer and refuge disposal controls of erosion location of equipment storage of buoyant material extent of paving, extent of fill, storage of chemicals, etc. And um, I think that we should note and acknowledge that the Conservation Commission to a large extent has done this and in addition the construction requirements in the conditions that we just approved also address this, this, um, these issues and that the findings that we can acknowledge that we, that this application meets the findings requirement under section 3.228 through 3.231. And unless there's any any opposition or any question regarding that, uh, we can move on to the next findings. The next findings, um, we can, we'll note that all the, all the um, uh, dimensional regulations are met. Um, we need a, under mixed use buildings, this is the, what we generally discuss before regarding the the uh, street frontage. Um, the, is the, the, this is a one. Uh, this is allowed under the RVC zoning district, uh, and that the uh, the uh, generally the intent of this 3.325 mixed use development building and its requirements for street facing etc. has been met by the proposal put before us and the applicant today. Um, on parking. The, under the requirement, I, I have no problem with 23 as opposed to 24 parking spaces. I think there's more than enough. And so I think we can say that the parking requirements have been have been confined, that the parking requirements of the bylaw have been met with this uh, and our ability to vary those parking requirements based upon the conditions at the, on the site. Um, Let's see, the last use of the findings for the floodplain development of the board. Oh, we have to make a, they're asking for a special, obtain a special permit on the boardwalk. Um, again, that's section 3.228 and section 3.231 um, factors listed in the zoning bylaw. And that the zone, this has been approved by the Conservation Commission and we've made the findings, I think specifically we can make the findings that the um, application meets the requirements of the flood prone conservancy district um, required under the bylaw. Lastly, we have section 10.38 findings that we have to make under every um, special permit application. 10.380 and 10.381 is the suitably located in the neighborhood in which it's proposed. I think it is. It's, it seems like an extension of a current building. 10.382, 3.83, 3.85, uh, We have to find that this proposal would not constitute a nuisance for water pollution, flood, noise, order, dust, vibration, lights, or visual offensive materials. I think we can say with confidence that, the, uh, that it meets the requirements to make this finding, especially with the uh, addition of non um, of downcast lighting and, um, and the, uh, the screening uh, 10.384 appropriate facilities provided by the op for the proper operation of the proposed use everything from the construction to the parking I think provides adequate and appropriate facilities uh, the pros ensures that conformance with parking sign regulations uh, we've already approved the uh, 23 places or we've indicated that we there's no problem with 23 rather than 24 spaces. 10.387 was already dealt with up in 10, the first um, or second um, group of um, findings that deals with convenient and safe vehicular traffic. 
And I think that's particularly true in the removing of the, the driveway and making that into a pedestrian walkway. And with the several different entrances onto West Street from the property, um, there is uh, no need for a, a traffic plan or for a, tra a traffic impact study. And it does provide safe and um, traffic for safe and convenient uh, for tra traffic for vehicular as well as pedestrian uses. 10.389 provides adequate methods of disposal for sewage or refuge. The management plan deals with that sufficiently. 10.390 deals with the protection from flood hazards as stated in section 3.228. Again, this has been looked at by the CONCOM, the uh, order of conditions which they've made. And uh, I think we can find that, they, that that and the construction details that we have in the special permit conditions will you know, mitigate any, any effect adverse effect on flood hazards and, or, and meet the requirements of 10.390. 10.391 deals with unique or important natural historic scenic features. It's not, uh, obviously it meets the requirement here. 10.392 proposal provides adequate landscaping, including, uh, and I've re we reviewed the landscape plan and the vegetation and the screening, especially for existing buildings. I think it meets those requirements. 10.393 deals with adjacent properties, mineralizing the intrusion of lighting, exterior lighting through cutoffs, luminaries. Again, the lighting plan is uh, downcast um, and uh, dark sky compliant. The proposal avoids impact on steep slopes. Um, again, this is the, the CONCOM has dealt with this and it's their, they have more knowledge and uh, expertise on this area, but I think we can, can uh, because of their approval and their order of uh, their their orders, uh, we can find, make this finding. 10.395 does not create disharmony within the terrain or the architecture of the district. I mean, it's, it's uh, strikingly similar to the other buildings. I think it meets the requirement of 10.395. 396, again, provides for screening to storage areas. Um, the, I think this is met by the, the site plan. 10.397 provides adequate recreational and open space facilities. There's, ample open space for um, activities on the site. Uh, 10.398 proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw and the goals of the master plan. Again, it provides a mixed use residential building in a resident a village center residential neighborhood. Um, it's in line with purposes of the zoning bylaw as well as the master plan. Is there any um, questions regarding the, the findings? If not, I'd like to have a motion that we make the findings required under those sections that I just enumerated. And I don't want to have to go through all of those again. So uh, do I have such a motion? So moved. So moved. Uh, everybody wants to be done with that. All right, two, we got two motions. I got a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the findings that the board makes the findings required as outlined under the staff um, project application report. Um, the chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. The vote is five to nothing. The motion passes to make the findings required and contained in the project application report. Um, the last issue is should we do, do we approve the uh, special uh, permit application? And I would entertain a motion that we approve ZBA 2024-20 request for a special permit under section 3.325 mixed use building and 3.22 flood prone conservancy district of the zoning bylaw to construct a 5,712 square foot mixed use building with nine residential units two first floor commercial spaces, a raised walkway in the FPC zoning district, um, and two waivers, one from the traffic impact study and a parking waiver. Um, and at the same time that we close the public hearing on this matter. So, so, moved. Moved. so moved, Mr. Chair. Moved Second. and seconded. Is there any discussion? Chris and Rob, have I hit all the needed uh, items for a, a full approval of the special permit? I think so. Does okay. Mr. Mora agree? I agree. All right. 
In that case, the vote, unless there's any discussion, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the special permit application at, uh, um, for the Amherst, Arf Amherst Office Park. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Mr. Henry? <clears throat> aye. Mr. White? Aye. The vote is five to nothing. The motion, the special permit application is approved. Mr. Laverdier, congratulations, good luck. I think you have a really interesting concept and I hope you do very well with it. Thank you very much and I hope so too. <laughs> thank you all for your time and efforts. Very much appreciated. You yes, thank you very much. The next order of business is public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. If members of the public wish to speak on any matter except those before the board tonight, they may do so by raising their hand uh, using the raised hand function on Zoom or pressing star nine on their phone. Um, when, if anybody wishes to speak and wishes to be recognized, when recognized, please state your name and address for the records. Uh, we have three attendees, no hands that I see. How about you, Jennifer? Ms. Mullins? Nothing? No. Right. Um, that being the case, no public comment. The next order of business is old, is, is new business, not uh, anticipated within uh, prior to the last 48 hours. Is there any new business other than scheduling, which we can discuss uh, with Ms. Bresta for the, uh, the upcoming meetings? No new mis business other than scheduling. Yeah, let's just run through the schedule for the next couple of meetings, if we could, Ms. Bresta. Do you have those handy or? Yep, I, let me I just get it off the wall here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Boy, that means that you're always thinking about it. So if you have I it look at it all the wall. time, yep. So <laughs> you have a meeting on July 11th. Um, Mathena Morrissey will be coming back for 180 North Whitney Street. Um, Jonathan Clayton will be coming back for 47 Redgate Lane. And then you have a new application for the Black Walnut Inn. They're essentially asking to continue doing what they've been doing, but under a new owner. And they're asking to have their site plan approved, um, which reflects what exists there now. So that's coming on July 11th. And then July okay. 25th, you have, did you have any questions about that? No. Okay. July 25th, um, you have Shutesbury Road Solar coming back. Um, there's a new application for Lane Quarry at 1550 West Street, which is in the notch, and they just want to continue doing what they're doing, so they want to renew their special permit. And then you have a special permit application for the spoke, and this one is the spoke that's along East Pleasant Street, not the one that's on Prey Street. So they want to um, make some improvements to their outdoor patio area. And then um, we're trying to get KP Law to come and talk to you on August 22nd about legal aspects of solar permitting. And um, that was something I think Mr. Meadows suggested. So um, we're going to try to schedule that for August 22nd. And other than that, I think that's it. We, we do have a meeting scheduled for August 8th, but so far we don't have anything um, on the agenda for that night. You know, I, we might want to be a little flexible on that August, that late August meeting. That's a pretty important, I, first of all, I, I would like to make sure if people are going to be here at that time uh, or serve on that Shrewsbury panel, that's a pretty important meeting to, to outline the state law that also governs uh, not only solar fields, but what we can do, uh, our ability and our, our discretion under state law. So Mr. Meadows and Mr. Sloviter, you were on that panel. Mr. Henry, are you on that panel as well? I am. Um, the it four of us are on that panel. Yeah, it is It is possible that I will be out of town, but I think I'll be able to take um, some time away for the meeting. Okay. Other people have travel plans for that date? I think I'm good as well. No, I, 
I have nothing. I expect to be good unless Philip speaks to President Biden and I get an invitation to do something <laughs> that night. But short, short of being asked for advice by the president, I expect to be here. Philip and I will be at the White House, okay? We can't make it. I don't think Mr. Henry had the pleasure of hearing about Mr. White's upcoming meeting. No. How would I miss? Ah, ah. Congratulations. I have now been appointed to be the new president of the United States. No. I don't think you want that job. No, 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 I don't. No, uh, my better half and I have the honor of meeting the president tomorrow. So. Oh, very nice. Congratulations. Really cool. I thought you were in Ireland. <laughs> nope, not anymore. I'm a oh, world traveler. Oh, no. Only his background. No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you'll, he's a genuinely nice man. Uh, you'll enjoy yeah. meeting him. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that, you know, that's pretty big um, new business that one of our members is sitting down with the president tomorrow. Um, it's not every night that we have that. It's a ZBA item on our new business list. So Mr. White, enjoy that immensely. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um, if there's any other business, new business that members have, we can entertain them at this point. If not, I intend to finish before we call, go for our normal 7.30 break. And uh, I'd like to do that at this point. So I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> moved and seconded that we adjourn. This is not debatable. And the motion, the vote occurs on the motion to adjourn. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Mr. Sloboder. Aye. Mr. Henry. Aye. And Mr. White from Aye. meeting your preparation for meeting with the president. Thank you much, all. The motion carries. Uh, we are adjourned. Have fun with that, Philip. It's gonna be that'll be great. That'll be really that's a cool thing. That Both is, for you. That is if I can get through Secret Service. Let me know. <laughs> well, well,